how to replace or change a coping saw blade, particularly if you're going to put it inside your work to cut out a shape. We know that if we're cutting round an object, be it the inside of our mould a little bit like this, or if we're cutting curved lines for our finger joints, then the coping saw is an ideal saw. But what about when we want to cut internal shapes that we don't have access to from the outside, like the shape on this mould or the letter on this particular piece of birch ply? Then we have to actually take the blade out, and this is how you do it. When you pick your coping saw up, it's really important that you don't just turn the handle at the end and twist the blade up a bit like a corkscrew. Your thumb and your first finger should hold these two pins together. When you've held them together, you then turn the whole of the handle anticlockwise, so that's the same direction, uh, the wrong direction as far as the clock is concerned. And you undo that handle and that makes this piece come out a little bit and releases the tension off the blade. You need to undo the tension until there's just enough room to be able to uh, take the blade out properly. When the blades come out about a centimetre or the width of your little finger, you don't need to turn it until the handle drops off. The tension on the blade is significantly reduced. I've got this block to press against, but you can often turn the saw against and push down onto the end of the desk. But you're going to use this hand to push in this direction to relieve the tension. Hold the blade and push, and so it comes undone. Ideally, try to keep the blade in on this end of the uh, saw, but if it drops out, it's important you put it back in so that the teeth point towards the handle. Quickest way to test that is to run your finger lightly down the blade, and if you can feel it gripping, in this case I can feel it gripping in this direction, then the teeth point towards the handle. You want your marking out to be face up so that when it's on the saw, it's facing the handle. So you make sure the end of the blade is kept in this piece, often by putting your finger on the end there, and then you slot this piece of work into your uh, blade so you can see the blade comes all the way through and then you can use your thumb and your first finger to actually apply pressure. If you use your hand and you put your pressure on the end here again and you use your arm to push this way then you can reconnect that relatively easily by making sure that that just drops into this point here and if not you undo it a little bit more until it will fit. Once it's connected, you then hold these two together, otherwise they will twist. If they twist, they will damage the blade and you will not be able to saw very straight. So you hold those two straight with your thumb and your finger and you twist the handle clockwise. This time the same direction as the, hand, the hands on the clock go, righty-tighty, and you keep turning until it gets a reasonably tight so that it doesn't move anymore. It's then ready to use. And I said, it's just important, you can probably just about see the teeth there, the teeth actually point in the direction of my thumb towards the handle. That's really important. 